The idea of being reborn as someone else after you die is an attractive prospect to many. But to others, it's a downright inconvenience. What? I have to go through all this again? Can't I just go to hell? Whichever view you subscribe to, the idea of reincarnation is fascinating. It means you've lived hundreds, maybe thousands of lives already. And you may have an infinite amount of lives awaiting you in the future. But what proof do we have of this? How can we tell for sure that this is your first life? Starting at 4. Why am I like this? If you're attempting to prove that reincarnation truly occurs, then where would you start looking for evidence? Historical records? Scientific investigation of the body after death? God's secret live journal page he hopes nobody knows about? Nope! According to the Canadian-born U.S. psychiatrist Dr. Ian Stevenson, your first route of inquiry should be diseases. Dr. Stevenson was fascinated by the way some people acquire certain diseases and conditions, whereas others from the same environment and hereditary line do not. He theorized that an unknown cause might be at play, which he believed may account for why certain people have special abilities and specific emotional disturbances. The good doctor concluded that some kind of unknown process takes place during birth, whereby personality or memory is transferred to you from another body at the moment of death. The doctor was careful to note that he wasn't fully committed to the idea of reincarnation, because no physical evidence exists. However, he was willing to say that reincarnation was the best explanation available for this mysterious acquisition of human traits. That position is very interesting, because the majority of reincarnation believers are of a religious perspective. Dr. Stevenson was a man of science, and instead of using reincarnation to explain what happens when we die, he was using it to answer questions about the living human body and mind. And what's fascinating is that in 2015, eight years after Dr. Stevenson's death, we have found proof that some elements of the human experience do indeed transfer between beings. Number 3. Historical Trauma If your parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, or beyond have ever experienced some great trauma in their lives, then there's a chance that this is hard-coded into the very fabric of your being, your DNA. This was the major finding uncovered by researchers at New York's Mount Sinai Hospital in 2015, when a genetic study of 32 people revealed that terrible experiences can be passed down through the generations. The study's subjects were all former inmates of a certain type of camp during a certain world conflict, started by a certain unhinged Austrian with a funny mustache all of which YouTube penalizes us for mentioning, hence the chicanery. Anyway, you get the gist. They had an awful experience in their lives, and it clearly affected them deeply. And it turns out that this trauma also impacts their children, and will continue to affect their lineage for generations still to come. When a brutal event takes place, the researchers found that changes are made to the chemical tags attached to your DNA and these amendments are passed through generations. Famine, pollution, and even poor diets are also capable of altering these genetic tags, and there's some evidence to suggest that some memories and personality traits may transfer genetically as well. So is this what Dr. Stevenson was looking for? Are memories and personality traits sent from parent to child? If so, could consciousness be transferred too? Is the life which existed within your mother, father, grandparents, and great-grandparents the same life which flows through you today? Perhaps you've shared all those lives. Perhaps you've been part of every life all the way back to mitochondrial Eve. Perhaps we are all part of the same single consciousness. At 2. 
past life regression. One of the more dubious aspects of reincarnation is the idea that everyone who remembers their past life seems to have been a person of importance. Whenever someone is hypnotized to inhabit the mind of their former self, they're always a king or a knight, or a member of the aristocracy. They're never the cleaning lady at the local cat house who died a plague in her 20s. If reincarnation does occur and the memories of your past lives can be accessed, we should have a more varied selection of characters to pick from. And perhaps we do, it's just that we generally only take notice of those with the wildest stories. When he wasn't busy prodding people with diseases, Dr. Stevenson from our first entry interviewed hundreds of ordinary children who claimed to have past life memories. When he did, he found that many of them had physical defects, such as deformed fingers or birthmarks. And the eerie thing is, these body splotches and twisted digits often matched up with their tales from a past life, which in turn tallied with the autopsies of local people who had died. Children who reported being shot as their former selves had birthmarks where the exit wounds were. Kids with warped fingers remembered losing theirs in a past life, and these stories could be matched to the real lives and deaths of genuine people from that area. So are these kids just great liars? Or do all humans live continuously, forever? And at number one, Biocentrism. Biocentrism is the theory that consciousness creates the universe, not vice versa. It holds that whatever it is which keeps us aware and alive, it is so important that reality could not exist without it. Reincarnation plays a major role in this theory, as it offers us the most logical explanation of where your consciousness goes after your biological body dies. We've discussed consciousness and biocentricism on this channel before, with the work of Sir Roger Penrose providing a fascinating insight into how life force leaves the body upon the moment of death. And according to his understanding, reincarnation would not work as you might expect. Rather than your conscious life taking place within another body, it would instead start out in a whole other universe. At the point of your death, your consciousness moves on to inhabit another vessel. However, instead of coming back as a Russian peasant girl or a Saudi prince, you return as yourself, albeit an alternative version of yourself in a parallel universe where your timeline unfolds differently. Why this occurs and what you're supposed to achieve are entirely different issues altogether. But if biocentrism is accurate, then consciousness should not be able to die. Another explanation which links biocentrism with reincarnation adds the idea of a simulated reality into the mix. If the human race exists inside an elaborate construction made by an advanced being, then this would make our bodies mere vessels for information. Information which would be transferred to other vessels like data to a hard drive. This fits with biocentrism which rejects the importance of the physical reality and instead values human consciousness. If our reality is fake, then our consciousness must have been implanted into this reality somehow. And if so, that means it could be transferred between bodies. Sometimes this transfer doesn't work properly, hence these random flashbacks from a past life. And the continuation of personality traits can also be explained by the idea that the same consciousness is used to inhabit multiple bodies throughout the course of the simulation. Told you it was a rabbit hole. Can you imagine the impact of the human psyche if this were true? How would we react if we could prove that our minds live forever? Wouldn't it destroy every concept of self, society, and civility we've worked so hard to create? We're going to discuss this in our bonus video, The Connotations of Reincarnation, which you can watch on our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash strange mysteries. For a $2 a month pledge, which you can cancel at any time, you'll get to watch this and indeed all of our bonus content, which goes deeper and darker into every topic than YouTube allows. If you don't want to donate, then it's cool. We still love you. 
and we'll continue to provide the best content we can under YouTube's restrictions. As you'll find out by watching our recent video, which asks if we could ever create consciousness.